Hello, welcome back to another of the quick updates. This time you can see here a, a lot of genuine RF parts or RF transistors, which I'm pretty happy about so far managed to collect for a really, really good price as well. Since somebody is clearing up their little RF repair workshop, so I managed to obtain everything for a really, really cheap price. Or else you expect like one single transistor to cost between eight dollars to twelve dollars or so ever. or sometimes can even went, went higher if it's in high demand but here we can see really really interestingly quite a lot of transistors generally if you buy them on amazon or ebay generally they are fake because the good reason is the manufacturer no longer makes those type of transistors and the fake one doesn't perform sometimes doesn't even work at home and their pin outputs also could be wrong as well so we have the case of 2078 or known as 2sc2078 it's a really really classic transistors used in a lot of citizen band radios those radios work on 27 megahertz whereas no more mpn transistor will not be able to switch that fast as there may be some more capacitance or maybe Miller effect that preventing it switching from that fast and distortion might happen. Generally, you want your transistor to work way below the cutoff frequency in order to achieve maximum efficiency. And here will be the 2SC series made by the famous Japanese Mitsubishi as also the RD series of their the RF MOSFETs and here we also have the NEC also a really famous Japanese electronic companies they also make good transistors as well here those are quite similar to 2078 but they might have a slightly different gain and also you have to drive them just slightly differently compared to 2078 but sometimes because they have the same pin output you might be able to get away with changing it replacing it one with another here we have the famous 2SD882 those are general MPN transistors because they are really low powered device so they have a really really small die geometry geometry of the die is quite small so therefore they can also switch really fast naturally but the modern ones made a cheap knockoff from the market might not even also perform as well on really high frequency applications those are really really good for like online DIY kits for like HF transceivers in the 40 meters or known as the 7 megahertz band let me just think of one like 49 no those transceivers the final output stage will be using some cheap D882 transistor but you can replace it with a much more stable made by the traditional Japanese NEC D882 and now we'll be going to a bit more detail this like if you go online shopping for RF transistor there's a really really good ways to tell the real one and the fake one the real one if you look really really carefully I'm going to give myself a pen you can see there's two spots those two spots actually has numbers written in it but if they're a knockoff one generally the manufacturer will basically sending off everything so this little mark will disappear so you wouldn't see it anywhere also another good advice is back in the olden times the transistor will have really really long this part of the leg then compared to this part of the leg for a much more modern approach the transistor will be just really really short like this this fat part this fat part basically prevents you inserting the transistor too further down on the PCB board. As well as like some genuine goods, RC2, like made by the Mitsubishi, they also have just slightly longer than the regular dimensions of a normal regular transistor in this package. Actually, this package is really, really similar, but just the 2SC made by the Mitsubishi is generally just slightly, just slightly shorter in the, with the width. Another good way is to search up their data sheets. For example, this is Sanyo. 
So Sanyu makes all the 2SC2078. A lot of people also use this to make EMP jammer, basically it's a waste of this transistor as well in a certain degree. But you can see here, Sanyu gave you the right description about each leg length, how long should it be, also the leg width. You can use yourself a micrometer to figure out the width of the leg, also the entire thickness, and the metal part is also a really good indication. And those two rings basically tell you where the marking injection hole will be for the transistor. And another really, really good way to tell apart from fake RF transistors is simply turn them over. You can see they have a pinched off shape for the Sanyu's production. For Mitsubishi, it's a bit funny, this looking shape. Really, really thin width of black plastic insulator. As well for the RF fats. The good thing is that you need to be careful with the gate of each MOSFET since they're easily damaged by static electricity. You can see how short are each of the black parts. Don't worry if they look old, they will work normally. As long as they have a correct like measurement on a transistor tester, they will work just fine. As well as for the NEC, they also look quite funny here, you see. Two little half semicircles with a cut off point. And for the NEC, that's why you can't really distinguish. But a good way to distinguish it is from this, this part of cutting, where the plastic injection mode stops. Also, you can look, NEC, instead of cutting or engraving their marking, they use a special type of ink that's coat it onto the transistor and baked it onto it so you can rub off with the regular isopropyl alcohol as well as for the Mitsubishi's but for Sanyu they basically laser engrave I'm not sure how many to etch it onto the plastic but you can see the surface is a, a slightly matte shiny surface you can easily tell apart the one that is fake by looking through the sides the sides is generally the side that will never get sanded and if they have the same reflection between the face and the sides, and you can look carefully on the edge, if you can't find any ir irregularities, then it generally means this transistor is not being sanded off. And this the real genuine parts. Also, I've managed to test it as well. It works perfectly well in genuine RF applications. You might ask me, why do I need so many RF transistors? It's a good reason because I like to test all sorts of RF amplifiers. I also like to destroy them as well with a wrong impedance matching to see why do they get destroyed for whatever reasons and how how SWR resistant are they. Basically, this is a classic CE amplifier. Depending on how well you tune the final part and how hard you drive the amplifier. Basically, if it's drive normally, it will reach class C amplification. If you drive them really hard, it will reach class E amplification, which is much more efficient. And there will be the filtering part. The each of the LC values actually depending on the frequency you are intended to use the device at. And for MOSFETs, it's even more funny. You have to provide some bias. The bias will also get filtered since you don't want to introduce like RF harmonics into your other electronic parts, which they might not like it. But with a simple amplifier circuit, including transistor one, I can basically show you how does it work. First, the inputs of any amplifier transistor, they basically have a different impedance to the Z equals 50 ohms, basically impedance equals 50 from your inputs. If the impedance does not match, not enough power will be delivered into your amplifier, and you might also reflect power back into your pre-amplifier and blow it up. But if you match the impedance well with the transistor or whatever device amplifier, it can be an amplifier chip or whatever. If you match the impedance well, that means maximum power will be delivered into the driving device. As transistor itself, made from a silicon die and have some bonding wire, the silicon die itself introduces capacitance 
and the little bonding wire will introduce inductance, which will be resulting in capacitive reactance and inductive reactance. They will not be cancelled out perfectly. So in this case, we will be building up this network to cancel out either the Z from the capacitive reactance or XC or the inductive reactance from XL. Including from the output stage, the impedance is also not equal to 50 ohm, which we have to match the impedance to our feeding line. If the impedance does not match, then the power will reflect right back here and probably destroy the transistor. If you run the VCC just at its rated voltage, one good way to sometimes prevent blowing up the transistor is to underdriving it and underpowering it. So sometimes when the reflected SWR coming back at the transistor, it doesn't blow it up. And for the MOSFETs, the RD50s or the RD60s used for the HF applications. If you use the RD50s, use it for VHF and UHF only. Because if you want to do HF, a lot of time you can get away easily with some really genuine gardening parts transistors such as RF510. Those parts you can obtain it easily from Mauser, Farnell or all sorts of reliable distributors, not from Amazon or eBay because you don't know what parts you're actually getting. With those parts, for, with a like a RF510, like you can just basically build whatever amplifier you want and um, basically they have a really really high voltage rating so it's kind of hard to destroy those type of MOSFETs but bear in mind they can still get destroyed easily if the impedance doesn't match well also the feeding voltage is also really high basically means the entire circuit working in really high power applications but MOSFETs from like genuine RF MOSFETs are much more delicate with not enough matching. Generally, if you get like a 2.5 to 1, sometimes the transistor can get damaged just that easily. But if they're a good transistor and, and you didn't overrun it, in theory, it can withstand like a 4 to 1 or SWR ratio. But the best SWR matching will be like the resistance will be able to completely withstand open and short circuits on this load line basically means an infinite SWR and for the testing series of the D882 basically be used for some small smaller power generations generally up to 3 watts can also get damaged really easily from mismatched load because we are pushing actually pushing the voltage to its rated voltage for this device because when you're building the amplifier the voltage reflects back sometimes can reach in like three times to five times of its actual rated voltage if it's running at cl class e but for class c generally you will run up to two times the input source voltage it can run up to but just de uh, just depends on the case on how bad is the reflection Anyway, hope you enjoy this video and so I shall see you in another of my new videos.